I was saying with the gang members. Some of y'all might already know. We right back. Um, this time we're gonna be checking out a little different content. I'm gonna need y'all to go ahead and show some appreciation for this because um spent a little time uh, first of all clearing out all the search history and all of that kind of stuff because I feel like I, I wasn't really appreciating the um recommendations and all that they was coming with. So um also um went ahead and took some time looking into different uh you call it um, categories and all of that stuff of different um, content we might be watching, uh, different channels and all that stuff. Anyway, like I said, y'all got to show appreciation on this one because a lot went into the pre-recording of this. Anyway, um, y'all go ahead and subscribe if y'all ain't already subscribed. Um, like the video, there's gonna be some heat. Well, I'm expecting some heat. I ain't gonna put too much on it, but. Um, comment, let me know how y'all feel about this one. And if y'all want to do more of the same type or different, um, similar type of uh, videos or something like that. Or if y'all got something else in mind, because that's the main intention. Like, uh, be watching it and checking into content based on the whole community and not just stuff that I'm already uh, familiar with. So, anyway, um, this one is called Most useless mega projects in the world basically it's gonna be a lot of um well i'm gonna say a lot but it's gonna be probably a list of um multi-billion million dollars probably billion um dollar projects and all of that stuff that um aren't serving the, the purpose that they were set out to or that don't seem to be um worth the perceived value or the perceived um expenditures on it basically so, um, yeah, like I said, so uh, comment, let me know how y'all feeling about it and all that. And we're about to start it up right now. You know that there is a capital city that was built for millions of people but remains practically empty? And that the U.S. Uh, wasted $17 billion for a mega project that was never... Look what I said, the billion, as soon as it started up. So I guess I wasn't um, wrong with that. Did you know that there is a capital city that was built for millions of people but remains practically empty? And that the U.S. wasted $17 billion for a mega project practically that was never even operative. used and remains completely useless to this day? Today, we will explore five of the most useless mega projects in the world. Before we continue, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Top Luxury. Share your thoughts about these mega projects in the comments below. Thanks. Even, uh, Number five, Interstate H3, too. Hawaii. Let's start with a breathtakingly scenic folks. highway in the Aloha State, Hawaii. The 26 kilometer long Interstate H3 passes through one of the most stunning landscapes in the world. It is so stunning yeah, that there were genuine concerns of motorists stopping and creating traffic hazards. However, the highway is as controversial sense. as it is beautiful. With it the, was first proposed in 1960 with defense lanes. considerations it's in like mind as the highway would it, connect the Pearl bridge, Harbor that, Naval Base on the south side to the Marine Corps Air Sydney, Station on the east the coast. Whole, um, the announcement of its construction was immediately met with like resistance from environmental groups as well as native Hawaiians who were worried about the People massive urbanization the project would bring. Environmental laws of the time and a change of route to protect the surrounding valleys delayed the plans indefinitely. 26 years later, the environmental hurdles were removed when the Congress exempted the project from environmental laws and That's cleared the way for construction like to argument, finally um, begin in 1989. Out, projects, out, the highway um, was finally opened in 1997, no it, almost 37 years, years after it was together. originally basically. I proposed. Interstate H3 is often considered an engineering marvel because of the difficult terrain it is built on and the advanced yeah, the technologies used in its construction. In addition like to the, the numerous high-tech tunnels, like the highway runs almost like exclusively that. over viaducts to protect the local environment in the valleys below. Decades nice. of decay, route changes, and newer but more expensive technologies meant that it was completed five times over the original estimated budget. The total cost of construction was $1.3 billion, so which is about $50 million dollars per kilometer, the most view. expensive cost per kilometer in the world. Despite the enormous budget, this beautiful highway isn't useful for everyone. 
Critics believe that it's a road to nowhere because the defense considerations of the 60s are no longer relevant and the highway has no direct route to downtown Honolulu. Facts. Then there's the case of native Hawaiians, a majority of whom refuse to use the H3 to this day. They consider it to be cursed as many religiously significant cultural sites were destroyed during its completion. The Interstate H3 oh, Highway shit. is certainly an achievement as far as mega projects go. However, for certain native groups, it you basically built something that's not going to have traffic if um, the locals look at it as uh, cursed and all of that stuff. Eh? Cut down like at least I would have to put a number to it, but at least a, a small percentage of um, traffic on that just by superstition alone. So that's like I had like. I keep on trying to put numbers, but I'm just saying, like, even if you want to like, put numbers to it, it's like, say, uh, half of the people believe that, and only uh, half of the people who believe it actually don't travel on that. There'll still be, like, a quarter of the population or whatever, like, that's even you know, putting it in larger numbers, but that's still, like, example of um, how, how much is wasted, like, you know, how much money being wasted, basically, like, if the uh, local's not using something, and it's only, like, a, a tourist, uh, bridge that's that's not going nowhere where tourism is um in place right now so. remains useless at least it isn't completely abandoned like the next project on our list i wonder what that's about to be number four ciudad real central airport spain an empty airport when you advertise with google that's not so bad Compared to uh, a bridge that go through different cities and all that stuff, and nobody using it. Travel destinations in Europe, and that was a key consideration when the idea for the Ciudad Real Central Airport was conceived. It was tipped to be the go. Number four, Ciudad Real Ciudad Central Real Airport, Central Spain. Central Airport. Spain is one of the prime Ciudad travel destinations Real. in Europe, and that was a key consideration when the idea for the Ciudad Real Central Airport like Real was Madrid. conceived. It was tipped to be the go-to destination for holiday travelers within Spain, as well as international I'm visitors. The vision for this new airport was to make it an alternative to the already heavily overcrowded main airport in Madrid. I'm really familiar with that uh, tourist lifestyle in government decisions being based on tourism and all of that stuff, being from New Orleans a support city and also um, it's a tourist city at the same time so it's all like aside from being a port and always having people who are not locals, you also got tourism going on year round so it's like I understand uh, what kind of decisions we made in different governments and all of that stuff like uh, based on what happened here. So. Basically, the new airport had one of the top for, five longest runways in Europe in and could serve your, uh, 2 million passengers a year. That's a relatively low number compared local, to Madrid's um, 70 million passenger capacity. Like, yeah. However, expansion plans were already in motion to boost the capacity up to 10 well, million annually. Local, um, so, relevant. when it finally became operational in 2009, the $1.3 billion expense might have seemed justified. However, all these plans came to a grinding halt in 2012 when the company behind the project filed for bankruptcy. Wow. The problems began That's with the location of the project. Like <laughs> While it was called the Central Airport, it wasn't central in Lord, you know, started a whole project in, in these people um, land and got uh, paperwork on it and funding and all that stuff. Then you file bankruptcy. That's like disappearing with a bridge any way, as it was located 200 kilometers away from Madrid. This compounded like problems as most really of the passengers the avoided traveling like for no hours to get to the remote point. location, and most big airlines preferred to carry out flight operations from the capital. People actually would, uh, so within the first for, year yeah. of opening, the newly built airport was reduced to a single small-time airline. With no major airlines to attract passengers, the airport had accumulated a $350 million debt by 2012. Unsurprisingly, it went into receivership and was put up for auction in 2013. 
The airport was even popularized as an abandoned location by the hit British TV show Top Gear in 2014. Now, that's After multiple auctions fell through, Google. including an outrageous $12,000 offer, the airport was finally sold to new owners in 2019. A oh, Spanish so airport uh, that cost 1 billion euros point. to build has attracted a bid of just 10,000 euros. Ciudad Real's La Mancha Airport opened in 2008, only to go bankrupt and close by 2012. As businesses crashed and profits Dang. dwindled during the COVID-19 pandemic, That's the Ciudad the Real right Airport oh, got a like, lifeline. Oh, no, With little hope landing. of passengers oh, returning, the new owners reinvented the airport as all a home for grounded planes, given its dry area. climate, long runway, and spaciousness. By August 2020, there were 65 airplanes as parked well, on the airport, the with expansions underway to provide a storage for facility advanced. for over 300 aircraft. This new storage approach gave the airport a much needed business opportunity. However, all the stored much needed. I wouldn't even say as much needed business opportunity because they just sold it. I mean, just showing what it, what it could have been all that time. I guess you could say that. Planes will eventually be gone once the pandemic is finally over and the return of normal flight operations remains elusive. This billion dollar mega project remains effectively useless for passengers around the world. This is this video from the end of uh, last year, so it's not that uh, long ago. And th this statement was true. But um, at this point, I would assume it's back in. Number three, Naypyidaw, Myanmar. Next up is another mega project that made it to top gear. Unfortunately, this isn't and just a remote airport. The, it's the uh, capital of Myanmar, spots. a new capital that was built from scratch. Myanmar's former military leadership started building a new capital in secret in 2002. The shifting of a country's capital isn't unheard of, as many countries, including Brazil, Egypt, and Pakistan, have done so in the past. In November 2005, oh. Myanmar's leader announced his decision to the Department capital the isn't end. unheard of, as many countries, including Brazil, Egypt, are a new capital that was built from scratch. Myanmar's former military leadership started building a new capital in secret in 2002. Okay. The shifting of a country's capital isn't unheard of, as many countries, including Brazil, Egypt, and Pakistan, have done so in the past. In November 2005, Myanmar's leader announced his decision uh, to the public, but he kept the name of a new capital it a, a secret. It, capital it was four months it. later when he finally revealed the name, Naypyidaw, which literally means the king's residence. The reason for this sudden shift of capital wasn't clear. Some speculated that the military leadership was fearful of an attack from the sea, while others thought it was shifted on the advice of astrologers. Nah, However, a lot of it had to do with the former capital, Yangon. Right there, Yangon so. is home to 7 million people, really and the city bad. is said to have Basically, reached its infrastructural well, limits, uh, uh, and its population is set to double on, uh, by 2050. Moreover, the coastal city was established as the, the capital during British time. rule to benefit the British Navy. So it made sense for Myanmar to shift the capital to a more central location. A, uh, the new project was built swiftly, and to this date, the successive governments have poured $4 billion into the city. Naypyidaw seemingly has everything to attract visitors. A 20-lane highway, over 100 luxury hotels divided into three hotel districts, golf courses, museums, hotel and even a 99-meter like tall replica of a landmark originally situated in Yangon. But there's one essential component that remains missing. What? People. The population. <laughs> the new capital is home to less than a million residents, most of which reside in the life. suburbs well, that were present even before the city became the capital. But why oh, does no shit. one want to live there? A lingering gap in health facilities, lack of quality educational institutes, and economic opportunities Which mean that most of the there. population is reluctant to make the city a permanent home. So the city often but paints the like picture of a deserted place and is often referred to as a ghost town. The incredible 20-lane highway is practically empty, traffic congestion is unheard of, and at times a single automobile is caught drifting along the tremendous road. The city has an airport that can handle 3.5 million passengers every year, but on a busy day, a dozen people will actually use it. 
The shopping hey. malls are visited only by the diplomatic staff on weekends, while the hotel lobbies are mostly empty. Despite the apparent barrenness, there's okay. a silver lining for the royal capital. It's built as a city of the future, and with the exploding population, Napiedaw still has time for an inevitable redemption. For now, it's arguably the world's strangest capital, and remains useless for much of the country's population. But you know, Number uh, two, Forest City. One million is a small amount in Egypt. I'm not saying Egypt, man. Um, India. In Indian countries. I mean, Indian territories. On our list is a green futuristic smart city that would rise from reclaimed land on four artificial islands and will be built around an artificial forest ecosystem. That, forest City's cool location play. makes it an appeal is a green futuristic smart city. Number two, Forest City, Malaysia. Malaysia. We talked of an apparent ghost city, and next on our list is a green futuristic smart city that would rise from reclaimed land on That's four artificial cool. islands and will be built around an artificial forest ecosystem. Forest City's reclaimed. location That's makes cool. it an appealing bet for investors who are aiming to profit from its proximity to the independent city-state of Singapore. Singapore has the world's second busiest port and a thriving economy. The developers have already linked Forest City with Singapore through the Second Link Bridge, shortening the distance wow. between the cities to just 20 minutes. Yeah, Forest no, City will also really have its own minutes. customs facility, enabling residents to move freely to Singapore and back. The design is advertised to incorporate many green innovations. Forest City will feature buildings with green rooftops and vertical gardens, providing a jungle experience. City streets will have a multiple layered design with the lower like layer for traffic and parking spaces, while the upper layer will feature parks, sports facilities, and transport hubs. The city will be powered exclusively with renewable energy and will be completed by 2035 at a cost like of $100 billion. Park. One of the four proposed islands is close to completion with 50 apartment buildings, golf courses, swimming pools, and beaches like a, a on board. Thing, However, it's Only not all like smooth being sailing being for this highly uh, ambitious project. A multitude of economic and political hurdles are already hindering its progress. The project being is the being funded be mainly through China, and Chinese residents virtually had a free pass to the city yeah, in the first few years of its construction. As a consequence, wealthy Chinese investors who couldn't afford the soaring prices of apartments in their own country rushed to Forest City. By 2019, 80% of the property owners were Chinese. Even the street signs were in Mandarin, and the few schools that opened in the area were offering Mandarin courses. The native Malaysians simply can't afford to buy these apartments as that. property prices are set with only the Chinese markets in mind. This influx of Chinese investors caused a public outcry, with opponents of the project calling it a new form of colonialism. That's all it is. So, after a change of leadership, the returning Prime Minister, Mahathir Muhammad, banned for- When people build something in your home that you can't afford and that the people next to you can't afford, then that's, what the, that's the purpose of it. It's for people outside of there to come where you are and for you to move out. That's obvious. Foreigners from owning property in the forest city. Many foreigners started leaving the city and new investors were discouraged. The next major setback came in the form of the pandemic and the worldwide travel bans. Malaysia's movement control order meant that no new investors could move in. Lots of existing investors opted out of the project due to the uncertainty. So, by the start of 2020, less than 500 people were actually living in the residential developments, which is not a lot, considering that Forest City is designed for 700,000 people. The project has remained in flux ever since, with some salespeople claiming that fewer than 10 homes were sold at Forest City since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. Moreover, Country Garden laid off more than 1,000 of its Malaysian workers in the past... Yeah. Y'all see how that go. 
but it's kind of um, dark as far as that. But yeah, it's the uh, uh, most useless mega projects in the world. Um, insightful, I think it was fire. Also, I think it's gonna be a, a hard time finding a picture to use for the thumbnail alone now. So, um, like I said, y'all like and um, comment how y'all feeling about the thumbnail once I come with one. And subscribe to the channel. See y'all on the next one.